So the author goes on to say, وَأَمَّا السُّنَنُ الصَّلَاةِ فَثْنَا عَشَرَ Yani the sunnah acts of the prayer are 12. And generally what we're referring to when we say the sunnah acts are those things in which the Sharia has recommended and has certified and stressed the reward of performing. The first one he mentions is a Surah Al-Ba'd Al-Fatihati Fir Ruku Al-Ula Wa Thaniyati. Reading the Surah, reading a Surah after Fatiha. So we mentioned that reading the Fatiha in the first and second rakat or in every rakat. Is obligatory but reading a surah after the Fatiha only in the first and second rakahs of any prayer then it is Sunnah although they mention the surah which means to read another verse what they what yani, the Maliki actually mean is to read any significant um, yani, anything that's significant after the Fatiha so even if you were to read one complete ayah that would be considered sufficient so that is a, it is sunnah for a person to read uh, to read after the fatiha at least an ayah but understand in the books of maliki fiqh they always use the word surah which a person would get the impression that a person has to read one complete surah but what they mean is ba'd surah yani a little bit uh, anything or something substantial after the fatiha and they mention in the commentaries that even if a person were to read an ayah, one verse of the Quran, that would be sufficient. A surah to ba'd al fatihati fir rak'at al ula wa thaniya, yani reading the uh, a surah after the, uh, reciting al fatiha, but this is only in rak'at al ula wa thaniya, and not in the any not in the third or the fourth rak'ah. So a person in the third and fourth rak'ah only reads surah al fatiha. Then he mentions wal qiyamu laha, and it is also sunnah to stand for the recitation of surah uh, of the surah that comes after Fatiha or the ayah, as we mentioned previously. So that's wal qiyamu laha, wa sirru fima yusarru fihi, and it is also sunnah to read quietly. In those prayers that are to be read quietly, for example, Dhuhr is to be read quietly, so reading sun reading it quietly is Sunnah. Whereas in Isha, reading out loud in Isha in the first two rakas is uh yeah, reading out loud in Isha is Sunnah. So what he mentions here is Wasirufima Yusarufihi which we can translate is reading quietly in those in those rakas that are to be read quietly and to read out loud in those uh, rakas that are to be read out loud. Then he says, وَكُلُّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ سُنَّةٌ إِلَّا تَكْبِيرَةُ الْإِحْرَامِ فَإِنَّهَا فَرْدٌ كَمَا تَقَدَّمَا And then he says, كُلُّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ is sunnah every takbir meaning every time you say allahu akbar are all the places in the prayer where you say allahu akbar which is every time a person moves from one position to another position in the prayer they say allahu akbar is sunnatun is a sunnah illa takbiratul ihram except for the takbir that is done at the beginning of prayer to enter the prayer fa innaha fardun because it's obligatory kama taqaddama as as was mentioned before, and what he means by as was mentioned before, because he mentioned in the previous uh, previously that the one of the obligatory acts of prayer is making takbir to ihram making the uh, takbir, saying Allahu Akbar to enter the prayer, and all of the other all uh, and all of the other takbirs that are made after the prayer. I mean, after the takbir to ihram are all sunnah. And that's what he's referring to here. Then he goes on to mention the next sunnah act was Semi Allahu Niman Hamida, yani, which means may Allah hear the one who praises him. And so during the prayer, uh, 
Semi Allah Huliman Hamida, which is said for Lil Imami Wal Munfaridi, which is specific to the Imam Wal Munfarid. What does that mean? Lil Imam, when the Imam is praying and he goes into Rukur, he's going to, when he comes up from his Rukur, he's going to say, Semi Allah Huliman Hamida. Likewise, a person who's praying alone. The reason why he mentions the Imam and the person praying alone is because the person who's praying behind the Imam is not going to say Semi Allah Huliman Hamida because it's the Imam who's going to say Semi Allah Huliman Hamida and then the uh, then the person found the Imam is going to say Rabbana lak alhamd. So that's why he limits it to Lil Imami Wal Munfarad. The Imam and the one praying alone says Semi Allah Huliman Hamida. Then he moves on to mention Wal Julus al Awalu. Wal Julus al Awalu, what he's referring to is the first sitting. And what we mean by the first sitting is the sitting that occurs in the second rak'ah. So in the Maliki fiqh books, they're going to call it Al Julus al Ula wa Julus al Thani. When they say Julus al Ula wa Julus al Thani, Julus al Ula, the first sitting, means the sitting that is done in the second rak'ah. Well, Julus al Thani means the sitting that is done in the second rak'ah. So the Julus al Awal is Sunnah, as he mentions here. And then he moves on to say, Wazaidu ala qadr salami min al Julus al Thani. And then he says, Whatever, it is also Sunnah, the sitting of uh, in the last rak'ah. Other than the time it takes for a person to say "Assalamu alaikum," and I explained this previously during our discussion on the uh, uh, concerning the obligatory acts, was that idu ala qadr salami min julus thani means that everything in the last rakah, other than the time it takes to say "Assalamu alaikum," is also a sunnah. But I mentioned to you the complete breakdown in it, as long as uh, in order to know the ruling of the sitting in the last rak'ah, we're going to look at what is done in it. So when we, when we, when we, when we, if the, when a person is saying assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum is wajib. Thus, the uh, the sitting during that period is wajib. When a person is saying the tashahud, the tashahud is sunnah, and so the julus is sunnah. Reading salawat on the Prophet ﷺ is a fadila, or you can say mustahab, then that sitting is al fadila or al mustahab. So that's the breakdown of what he's mentioning here. Then he says, وَرَدُّ الْمُقْتَدِي عَلَى الْإِمَامِ عَلَى إِمَامِهِ السَّلَامَةِ Repeating or returning the salam, the يعني رَدُّ الْمُقْتَدِي means uh, the returning of the salam for the one who was following his imam. What does that mean when the imam says, Assalamu alaikum? Then the ma'mum is going to say, Assalamu alaikum to his right, which is the obligatory act. And the sunnah act, which he's referring to here, is saying, Assalamu alaikum to the front. Then he says, وَكَذَلِكَ رَدُّهُ عَلَى مَنْ عَلَى يَسَارِهِ إِنْ كَانَ عَلَى يَسَارِهِ أَحَدٌ then he says that it's also sunnah for a person to make a salam to the person on the left if there is a person beside him. In short, what I just mentioned to you here is what he's mentioning is that obviously the first salam for the one who is following the imam is obligatory. But what is sunnah, what he's talking about here is after you say assalamu alaikum to your right, it is sunnah to say assalamu alaikum in front of you to the imam. And then if there is somebody on your left, then you're going to say assalamu alaikum on your left. So a person who's praying in jama'ah, technically speaking, if there's somebody on his left, he's going to say assalamu alaikum three times. Assalamu alaikum to the right, then assalamu alaikum in front of him, which is for the imam, then assalamu alaikum on the left. If there is somebody on his left, if there is nobody on his left, then he's not going, he's not requested to do it. Then he says, وَسُتْرَتُ لِلْإِمَامِ وَالْفَذِّ إِنْ خَشِيَ أَنْ يَمُرُّ أَحَدٌ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهَا وَسُتْرَتُ وَسُتْرَتُ 
means to put something that is we can technically say at least the a sutra is what a person puts in front of them if they fear as he mentions here in khashya an yamurra ahadun bayna yadayhi ma if he if he fears or if he thinks what fear here means is if he thinks that somebody is going to cut in front of him so if he thinks that somebody is going to cut in front of him during his prayer like example in a masjid after the sunnah prayers a person might be i mean after the obligatory prayer a person might be performing his prayer in a place where he thinks that somebody might walk in front of him maybe he might be close to the door or just in an area where people may walk past him then it is sunnah for him yani for the imam or the individual to place a sutra in front of him and a sutra as we mentioned is something that a person puts in front of him if he fears that somebody is going to cut in front of him and so there are a couple conditions that have to be met in order for a person to obtain the sunnah of the sutra it should be something that is uh, the length of an arrow so we can generally say something that is generally an arm span long right it has to be at least an arm span long it has to be something that can stand up in a sturdy for example a chair or a stick for a person who's praying outside by sticking it in the ground it has to be pure it cannot be made from impurities it cannot be yet yeah, it cannot consist of things that are impure also it cannot be something that is distracting something that would distract somebody in prayer for example something that has a lot of colors or designs or something like a flag if we consider these things distracting and so in order for a person to get the sunna of the sutra then some of these conditions are these conditions have to be fulfilled now one has to understand that these conditions are conditions in order to obtain the sunna It doesn't mean if a person has something like for example a sister wants to pray and she has her handbag so she's going to put her handbag in front of her so other sisters don't walk in front of her then she should do so because by doing so she's going to prevent people from walking in front of her what we're talking about now is the type of sutra that a person uses in order to get the reward of the sunna Also another important factor that he mentions he says that the sutra is sunna for two types of people one for the imam and other and the other is for the person who's praying alone now what is interesting is that he doesn't mention a sutra for anybody who's praying behind the imam so one who is following the imam He doesn't mention the rule because the rule of the one praying behind the imam is that the imam is his sutra. The imam is the sutra of the one who is following him. What does that mean? Technically speaking, it while you're praying behind the imam, if anybody were to walk between the rows to walk in front of you, they're technically not walking in front of you because the sutra is the imam. So a lot of the mistakes that people make for example a person nullifies his wudu and because he doesn't want to walk in front of people he starts cutting through the lines go spitting between the lines trying to walk all the way to the back of the mosque so he can get to the place to make wudu but the proper sunnah of leaving the prayer when a person has a nosebleed or something is to walk straight down the aisle because by walking straight down the aisle he is actually not walking in front of anybody because there's a sutra and the sutra is the imam so that's why he doesn't mention in this category of uh, I mean he doesn't mention uh, in this issue of placing the sutra he doesn't mention one who's following the imam because the imam is a sutra So when a person is praying behind the imam and somebody's exiting the prayer and they're walking down the aisle nobody should put his hand out in front of him because the sutra is the imam. And that is the end of the sunnah acts that the author Al-Ashmawi mentions in the text.